All right. Shalom, shalom. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jonathan, the Code Searcher. And uh, I want to talk to you guys again about the uh, election code. But we also got a couple of confirmations coming in hot from, of all people, Rudy Giuliani and Mark Bills on some of the things I've been telling you guys for a long time now. Uh, and I happened to be watching both the other day. And uh, lo and behold, if, if Rudy G Giuliani doesn't start talking about the same exact things I've been telling you that, that's going on and, and how they're going to do this thing during the election, he tells you straight up, right? But then Mark Taylor, uh, excuse me, Mark built on an interview talking about a new book that I haven't read yet, but I know, you know, that, you know, the sons of light, the sons of darkness, I know the basic story behind that scroll. And uh, Mark's written a book on that. And he says a couple of things in the interview that are, you guys, they're, they're on point. Um, it's exactly what y'all has been showing me. And, uh, you know, so I wanted to share that with you before we get into the code that we're going to look at, which is the election 2024 code. Um, first, let's go to America's mayor. Listen to what he says and, and see if does a, if this doesn't sound familiar. Right. He just said this a couple of days ago. If you guys would go in, this is actually a really good video, um, a really good um he, he does a podcast every day. This is 522. This was um, like when we had 13 days before the election, right? So just a couple of days ago. And it's the last part of uh, the last segment of his of his broadcast. He says this. Now, listen, I told you guys Operation Tammany is in effect and it has been. Listen to what he says. A lot of and he's not going to go on until about 7 p.m., I don't think. So um, mm. it was announced he's also doing a rally in Arizona. Uh, so so in the same day, he's flying from Arizona to Vegas. Um, he's in, in uh, Duluth the day before. So, I mean, it, the fact that he can have the stamina to do that many, I think he's done like three in a day. He sat, yeah. uh, Kamala says that he can, he's falling apart. He's really... Not able to make it. He's falling. Meanwhile, she's taking to meanwhile she's taking today off sleeping. <laughs> Kamala is sleeping. Now he makes a joke about Kamala, and Kamala doesn't appear to be doing very well. You guys in in you know the media and what's going on in front of us. So let me ask you a rhetorical question. You think that matters? She seems very confident for some reason that she doesn't have to be too serious, right? Why is that? Well, old Rudy here is going to put it down for you, right? Yeah. You think Kamala snores? I think she snores. I think she snores. Oh, you want to see a nice poll? Pennsylvania, the key state, new poll today, 46-43. Hey, we'll pay. Oh, that's good. All right, so remember how I told you that uh, all through this, they're going to make it appear that it's a really close thing, right? When we all know what's really going on. Okay. Okay, so the last time, all this, and by the way, this is exactly what happened last time. Biden was a bumbling fool. Everybody's saying Trump, Trump, Trump. And I told you guys, it didn't matter. It doesn't matter. He's a bumbling fool and he's, he can't, he's stumbling everywhere and everything that he was doing, because when, when you, when you got it in the bag, it doesn't really matter. And I told you guys, it was going to be blatant and in your face. And guess what? Round two, right in your face. And I told my, my best friend just the other day when I was talking about this, that I think this is the trigger. This is what inflames people because, you know, one time is a fluke. Two times is a slap in the face. You think that's going to go down well? All right. So very close race in Pennsylvania. Listen to what he says about these states. Tammany. And, and what else? You know what else? The Senate candidate. Has pulled out ahead. Cormier has pulled ahead of Bob Casey, and that's that's meaningful. That's that last bigger. name, that's Casey, even bigger. That's even bigger. Is a popular. I, mean, yeah. I, 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 
I, I never like to make like completely definitive predictions. However, I am I'm the Philadelphia, I'm the Pennsylvania guy in the campaign. So back in 16, I convinced them to put a, a, assets into Pennsylvania, and everybody disagreed with me except Bannon. And when we won Pennsylvania, boy, did I feel like a genius. You know what he's talking about? The assets he's talking about is the same assets he employed in the city of New York when he was mayor, when he fixed the welfare situation because people were, you know, abusing the welfare system. There's like a million people on welfare. Some of them were on there like eight times. And he devised a way with the fingerprint and registering people on welfare. And it cleared the board. And suddenly, they, instead of having a million people on welfare, they had 400,000. And it, that these are the assets he was talking about. It's it's about tracking the person, right? So he said that he employed these assets in 2016, right? We know what happened. But all during Trump's presidency, guess what the other side was doing? Because Trump left in all the bad people in their offices and where they were in high places. Guess what they were doing? They were making sure that didn't happen again. Listen to what he says here, folks. Yes. Then in 20, I'm in the White House counting votes, and I'm watching Pennsylvania go up 300,000, 400,000, 500,000, 600. When we got to 800,000, I let out a you. Remember that? Up in the White House. And Maria said, quiet down, quiet down. Remember that? And I and then I had, uh, had Newt Gingrich people, came. Had people messaging me that night, going, "Jonathan, Trump's won this. You were wrong. You were wrong, right?" And then what did they do? Come on, tell me, tell me down below, what did they do? Over, and he puts his arm on Dr. Maria, and he says, uh, "You're watching history," meaning we were going to win. He said, "You can't, you can't make up eight hundred thousand with sixty-five percent of the vote. Can't do it. Impossible." He said, I have, I have mathematicians saying it's math, mathematically impossible. Mathematically impossible that Biden could win. Tammany. Within five minutes, I hear they've closed down the voting in Pennsylvania <laughs> <laughs> and, in, oh, and in Philadelphia. And immediately I said, oh, my God, they're going to try to really steal this. Yeah. Oh, my God, they're really going to try to steal this. Because they only closed it down in crooked cities. They only closed it down in Philadelphia, Tammany, Pittsburgh, Tammany, uh, Detroit, Tammany, uh, Atlanta, Tammany. Yeah. Now where else? Uh, oh, well, uh, uh, in Milwaukee. In um, in Milwaukee. Detroit. Tammany. Yeah. Oh, Detroit was big time. Detroit was a big truck stop. Tammany. Right? Yeah. Our county, Nevada, uh, Maricopa County, Arizona. Maricopa County. Well, I mean, Phil now listen to this, Maricopa County in Arizona. He makes a Tammany reference to this. Watch. Maricopa, Maricopa is a little is a little different. I wouldn't put Maricopa in the in the category of the kind of legendary crooked city that um, Philadelphia or New York or Chicago. They're legendary yeah. cities. I mean, they don't have a boss tweet or. There it is. Uh, Maricopa County doesn't have a boss tweet. Well, it didn't. It does now. Boss tweet is a direct reference to Tammany, folks. Even Rudy Giuliani sees it. That's a confirmation right there. So you know what's going to happen? So it's going to be a close race. It's going to look like a neck and like the Kentucky Derby and the two best horses just running at it. Everybody knows it's rigged, right? I got to be careful what I say. I got to be careful because this is how they take you out, folks. This is how they take you out right there and things like that. So we have to watch and wait and see. But I'm just saying Tammany is all over this. It looks like Operation Tammany. And uh, the, it, the okay, the beginning of this broadcast, he was talking about illegal aliens and people coming into this country and their intentions. And it's not just to throw off elections and all that. Mark Biltz is going to tell you the other reasons. And the codes are confirming it. And I wasn't even going to tell you anything until after the election because we need to get over one hurdle before we get to another one, right? But but Mark's already let the cat out of the bag in, in what he said. And I'm going to bring confirmation to that. 
um, when you know, we're not going to look at those codes today. That'll come after the election. But I can I can tell you he's spot on in what he's saying. So he just told you Maricopa County didn't have a boss tweed. Now go look look Google boss tweed. Boss Tweed was was the brainchild of one of the most powerful political machines in a Democratic Party. And it lasted, you know, he was he was, you know, pretty big. And it, he didn't, he wasn't even the one that started it. It started in the 1700s. He just happened to be the big cog in the in the whole gear mesh of the machine during the Civil War. And incidentally, in that movie, Gangs of New York, there's a civil war going on in that time. And guess what they were doing? They were bringing immigrants in and putting them right into the army to go fight in the South against the Southerners. People that had just got to this country. They were also voters and citizens and all the rights you and I have, right? Tammany, it's, 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 an, it's listen, this is not a new trick that they're doing. This is really... Now, it's been going on for a long time. Supposedly, Tammany Hall was disbanded in, you know, like 50 years ago or something like that. But I don't believe that's what's happened. I think it just went underground, right? All right, so now, before we get to the code, I want to go to Mark Biltz because he's going to he's gonna add some things to this, bring, um, you know, some, some biblical understanding to some of the things. And, and you know, the last broadcast that I did, I, you saw the, the thumbnail behind me, which is the United States showing the uh, the um, path of the um, solar eclipse, and then there was a lunar eclipse, and so the solar and lunar eclipse have purpose and meaning. The Bible tells us that y'all communicated, communicates with his people through this. So he's telling us something when when he when these signs happen, especially when they're super rare. So Mark has written a few books ago a few books years ago on the blood moons and what he thought they meant the connection to war and uh, you guys have been repeating the same thing i actually know mark i met him a few times at um, conferences and we've talked about codes and things like that i'm his, i'm a subscriber to him and i believe he's still subscribed to me unless something's happened but um i don't know if he watches my videos and i don't think he's he's gleaning from me in the things that he's about to say um but I can I can definitely say that it's a confirmation of what Yah is revealing to me in the codes. Let's go to that right now. It's only going to be just a small portion of it. The whole interview was one hour, but I'm not going to um, play the whole thing. Just a section, and we're starting about nine minutes in. So if you want to see this whole thing, go over to Mark's channel and watch it. It's it's about an hour. It's fifty five minutes, fifty six minutes long. We're starting about nine minutes in because first nine minutes, he's talking about how he got into tracking the sun and the moon and, and, and things like that. But this is kind of where the meat and potatoes is right here that, that I want to play for you here. So please listen to what he has to say. We're going to talk about it and then we're going to look at the code that I have for you. All right. Sure. Um you're saying uh, not all the eclipses fall on major dates and major holidays, exactly. but, but but you notice that some of them were, yes. and then you use that as a template. As a template. Can you get us just a little bit of the math? I don't want a lot because my head will explode. But I mean, how how did you then use that with, it's, it's just so far over my head to be frank with you, Pastor. How did, how did you get the information about NASA? And you, okay, the first thing you discovered was that, hey, a lot of these uh, eclipses are falling on major Biblical, Dips. yes. And then you went from there? Yes. Well, then I go to NASA to really understand the <laughs> math. And it showed you on, on average over the last 5,000 years. NASA has 5,000 years of eclipses. And the math says over 5,000 years, you only get one total lunar eclipse every year and a half, roughly. That's the odds. One total lunar eclipse in a year and a half. Well, now we're getting four total lunar eclipses in a year and a half. That just blows it off the chart. And then on top of that, they're all falling on biblical holidays. That even makes it more astronomically off the chart. And so I thought, oh my goodness, let's look. And then I looked at the history and they're happening during wars with Israel. So I knew something was coming, but do you know what, Roger? I didn't know what it was until two years ago, what the 2014, 2015 blood moons meant. And I don't know now, and it's even more mind blowing. 
to, for uh, your listeners to understand, in the Bible, every 50 years was a year of Jubilee. And in the year of Jubilee, they eliminated all debt and people got their land back. Well, the biblical years of Jubilee was 1973 to 2023. So it just ended a year or so ago. Well, guess what? Yom Kippur, Israel's Day of Atonement, always begins the year of Jubilee. And what do we have? The Yom Kippur War in 73 was the very first day of the Jubilee year. 50 years later, 2023, the October 7th War was the very last day of the same Jubilee cycle. So here you have war, the first day in 73, the last day in 2023, and both of those were forewarned by the four total lunar eclipse in 67, which brought a war, as well as 2014-2015, the four blood lunar eclipses, was a warning of the October war that ended the Jubilee cycle. All right, let me see if I'm grasping this a little bit. Um, you're saying that NASA had like 5,000 years of records of eclipses and there, was, there should have only statistically have been like a few of them, and yet then you discovered that there were four just in a year and a half, and, and what you did was you took, you plotted these times, yes, yes. And, and you just uh, compared it to what happened in history. Exactly, exactly. And mathematically, you only get one total lunar eclipse in a year and a half, and I saw there were four. And so I thought, wow, this is incredible mathematically. So then I looked, and they fell on two of the biggest holidays of the year in a row, two years in a row. That's just mathematically, that is totally off the chart. Could you tell our listeners uh, what a Jubilee year is? Not everybody is going to know anything about it. Yes. Uh, every, just well, there's also well. Let me not make it confusing. Let me just say a jubilee year meant every 50th year there was an economic reset. All the debts were cleared. Think how that would help the economy if every 50 years there was an economic reset. But also the land wasn't to be sold; it was to be leased, and so therefore everyone got their land back. That sounds like a pretty good a pretty good reset. Okay, so you found that there was an extraordinary amount of eclipses that we shouldn't have had. And then you compared that to the last time those things happened? Yes. Is that fair to say? Yes, and th that's exactly what I did. And I noticed each time there was something very prophetic that happened. Each time something prophetic happened. Uh, all right, let me ask you this. And, and now, there actually is a lot of math involved with this. I think, I oh, believe yeah. you showed some pages out of uh, your book that showed all these mathematical equations. Yes, yes. And uh, it's, it's very heady stuff. Um, now, are some of your conclusions revealed in your latest book, America at War 2024 through 2026? Yes, I, I show all through the book, I lay out economically where the United States is headed, and I, I really see war coming to the United States homeland within uh, the next couple months and going all the way through 2026. It is all laid out prophetically. Now, you guys, I don't, I don't know if it's going to happen in the next couple of months. I do see that after the election, we'll we'll see a market crash and possibly war, but I, I can't distinguish a timeline on when that will be. Uh, Mark, Mark seems to think it's very soon, um, but we will not just have international troubles or, or some people that, uh, first of all, first of all, our enemies in the Middle East, especially Iran and the enemies we're making with Russia because of our meddling and and proxy war with Russia in Ukraine, we've been, we're inflaming uh, other countries. Muslim countries have no respect for women leaders. Okay, they see it as a defilement. And women are is, are in a different class, and I'm speaking mostly like Iran and you know um, Shiite um, countries. Uh, where women are even, even less than second class, okay? So to see a woman become president of the most powerful nation, theoretically or historically, will be a signal to them that America is defiled, and it will embolden them uh, to, to do things. And I've, I've found codes on this that we are potentially going to see terrorist attacks um, from people who've come in through the border have brought things across the border uh, that they will do chaos in this country. Um, things like suicide bombing, maybe truck bombings, um, mass murders and, and such a, and, and attacks. Um, Jewish communities like, um, you know, Jewish strongholds like in Los Angeles or in New York or in Miami, different places like that 
you can expect those kind of things are very highly probable. Okay. Mark's going to speak about that in just a moment, you guys. That's why I want you to see this. The, the, the war in America, he's talking about the, the, the sons of light and sons of darkness you've heard me talk about for years. And then suddenly Mark's written a book on it. Yeah, well, and uh, yes, and there's something else you said that, that also uh, would, would lead to that. Where you talked about the, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but uh, you said that the election might even be uh, in jeopardy. Um, but uh, we'll get into that in, in a little while. Uh, but I guess, okay, so you see things happening and 2024, 2026, that's one of these, one of them. So the question would be, and I was speaking to some folks about this, they said, well, if everything is prophesized, then is everything set in stone? Do we not have control of our destiny? Does it not make any difference what we do? Or does it matter? In other words, can we help ourselves, our country, and our civilization, let's say, with the next election? A, a great question. I believe in some sense we are in control, uh, absolutely. Of, and what I mean in control, I mean not necessarily of world events, but in our, uh, of our own events in life. Uh, one thing that is very important is we vote righteously. We vote for the person that is going to be the most righteous. Uh, but God is always looking for people to intercede. And just like with Nineveh, when it wasn't destroyed, when God said it was going to be, that means there are mitigating factors. And Yah does change his mind. That's his point here. And Nineveh was in the eclipse pattern, several cities called Nineveh. And I even saw Jonathan Kahn in, in a nation's capital doing a... A ceremony where he smashed the the altar of Baal and everyone was blowing shofars and they were praying for this nation. And so that is a form of intercession. Uh, it, we, we will see if, if Yah has relented. But Mark is going to say something here about the destruction of the temple and, and things like that and about Jeremiah in just a moment that you need to pay attention to because this is how I feel, and I see incredible parallels with Jeremiah and what was prophesied about Israel and this country. A lot of these codes are in Jeremiah, and so when Jeremiah is speaking to Israel about their sins and their idol worship and their killing the babies and all this kind, of, and then we see codes about America in the very same text, there's a parallel there, folks, right? So listen to what Mark says. Where things can be changed. But it comes down to even when the temple was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar in around 600 BC, God told Jeremiah to stop praying. Forget it. Yeah, praying isn't going to help. And so we, th there's a balance. And I believe right now, America, even within the church, there's so much wokeness and immorality that I am not sure how much we're going to have over the events. Uh, but not that, but even politically, we've allowed so many terrorists into mm. this country. Sorry. I'm telling you right now, there are Iranian terrorist cells all over the United States that are ready to go as soon as they're ordered. And that's why I believe we're going to see terrorist attacks here very soon. On top of that, I believe the deep state doesn't want uh, Trump to win, and they will do anything. If he ends up leading in the polls over the next couple of weeks, I would not be surprised if there isn't uh, big uprisings that cancel the elections or the opposed martial law or come up with some another virus. But you're going to see massive uprisings between the pro-Palestinians and the pro-Israelis. It's already happening right now in New York. They're saying we're taking it to the streets. No one's going to stop us. You're also going to see political uprisings between pro-Trump and pro-Harris forces, especially if the election is in doubt. You're especially if the, so did you hear what he said? He has concerns about the election. Right. So obviously, Mark is seeing what, what's going on and he sees that if Yah doesn't intervene. In other words, he's lifted his hand that we are in big trouble. And that's the bottom line. That's what it comes down to. If we see Kamala take office and we and it's blatant and we everything is in our face and we see what happens, we know the hand of Yah has lifted off this country and we are in trouble and we better get on our faces as a nation. If Trump wins, or we see y'all put Trump in there, or allow him to be in there, we've got four years to, as a reprieve. But Kamala will be the first woman president. It is slated. It's encoded there. Folks, I would rather it be the next election. Trust me. Um, but I, I just don't see that. 
They've tried to kill the man two times already. Do you really think they're going to be caught slipping on the election? And I'm just being real with you. I, I This is not what I want to see. And I, and I don't like to be the, the lone maverick telling you what's, what's about to happen. I would much rather see all kinds of confirmations, but sometimes y'all doesn't work that way. He said, who will go for us? And there was one that says, I will. Book of, Book of Isaiah, right? And I am also a man of unclean lips, just as Isaiah. And I am just a farmer, just like Amos. And the prophets have failed this, this nation and failed the church, folks. And Yah is doing something here. He's trying to get our attention. He's, it's not to destroy us. We know that from the from the exodus of the of the Hebrews that he allowed the Hebrews to go through the hardness of the first parts of of the uh, plagues to get them want to want to move. So to get this nation to move, he's going to let us go through some hard stuff. And by the way, uh, I'm guilty of this. I, I've been mainly focused on the United States. This applies to the whole world. Europe, Australia, Asia, anywhere in the world, we're all seeing the hand of Yah move and the judgments are starting on, on the earth. All the wickedness and all the governments and all the religion. And I mean mostly Christian. That's that's supposed to be Yah's house. His judgment is coming there too. Mark was just telling you about all the wickedness and the wokeness in the supposed the Christian church. It's out of hand, folks. And you know, I saw something the other day on the Church of Satan in the state of New Mexico are offering ritual abortions. In other words, not only did you go and kill the baby, but you can turn it into a ritual for the Church of Satan in New Mexico. That's this nation. And that's what happens. Also, I believe we're going to see a lot of uprisings between the illegal immigrants and the immigrants. <laughs> And can you imagine, Roger, if we don't have an election or it gets postponed mm -hmm. or there's so much fraud, no one trusts the results. We don't know who's in charge. That would be the perfect time for North Korea to attack South Korea, China to attack Taiwan. We're so involved in Ukraine. That's when Iran could attack and Hezbollah again, Israel. Uh, and, and so we are just leading America right into the ground. Our politicians are. It's really like we're going in reverse, headed towards the cliff. I've, I've never seen anything like it. Absolutely, especially economically. What most people do not understand economically, and let me put it real easy, the difference between one million, one billion, and one trillion. Yes. A million seconds is only 12 days, but a billion seconds is 33 years, and a trillion seconds is 33,000 years. Think of that. Think one that. trillion seconds is 33,000 years, and we're $34 trillion in debt, and we're going a trillion dollars in debt every quarter. The world is almost $100 trillion in debt. Everything is uh, bogus. Every, all of our financial system, I believe, is going to be crashing completely because of this over the next year. Well, I definitely want to get to that and ask you if you think uh, Trump can help thwart that. One interesting thing that I, I, I caught that you said, we, we brushed on it just before, but you said that the morality of the church um, is now lower than the morality of what the world was 70 years ago? Exactly. If you remember, Gone with the Wind was the first movie that had a cuss word in it. And the public was shocked. And yet now the church is below the standard of the world of 70 years ago. Who won't go and listen to all these R-rated movies, X-rated, you know, and, and it doesn't even affect them. It doesn't even bother them, which means 70 years from now, the church will be at the same level that the world is right now. Yeah, that would be pretty unbelievable. Well, it was a four-letter word, though, that he used in God with the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. Um, okay, the money. Uh, there's so many questions I have for you. I, I doubt that they're going to be in order. I'm going to rely upon you to make sense of it. So I'm just going to throw these things out there. Uh, you say that that we can't 
we can't follow the prophecies if we're not on God's calendar. Exactly. And there are these different calendars, the Hebrew, the Islamic, and then there's God's calendar. Um, how do you get on? Well, how do you find God's calendar and how do you get on it? And, and that way we would be able to predict and see these things happening? Absolutely. The whole thing is the church has gotten off of God's calendar. They've gone on a solar calendar. Julius Caesar from Rome. He's mm -hmm. the one working with the calendar and it's only based on the sun. This All right, folks. So if, if you haven't noticed, I've been teaching a lot about the calendar on my channel. And Mark has picked up on on this this phenomenon in the Bible about the the right Sabbath, even though he understands it's a lunar solar calendar. He still thinks Sabbath is Saturday, and he tries to fix it to a Gregarian. Um, he's still on the right track on this, right? So he's got a he's got a major point here, and this is one of the points where I where I told you in a previous video where Yah's going to unite his people over two factors. One of those is going to be his calendar, okay? So this is very important. This is why, to this day, sometimes Easter or the resurrection is celebrated a month before he even dies. How in the world do you celebrate the resurrection a month before he dies? It's because the church is using a solar calendar only, because the devil wants people to miss the boat. As you know, with Noah and the ark, you better be there before the door closes. Well, it's the same thing today. People need to get on the boat, and the only way they're going to know is by getting on God's calendar. Now, we have calendars on our website that combine the Gregorian with the biblical calendar, so people always know what time it is. I ask a lot of believers if we're supposed to know the times and seasons. They'll go, yes. I'll go, what time is it? Oh, I don't know. What season is it? Oh, I don't know. But just like in Ecclesiastes, it says there's a time for war and a time for peace. When you know what time it is, we're in a time of war. We are in the war cycle right now, which is why I tell people to get on the calendar that you can get on uh, our website or any Jewish website. So for those experts that uh, are deep into biblical prophecy, uh, you would advise them, well, that's fine and dandy, but you have to be on the right calendar. Absolutely. You are so good. You are so good, Roger. You're asking all the right questions because so many, there's a prophecy in Zechariah that these four biblical holidays will change drastically from fast days to feast days. But if you don't know when they are prophetically, you have no clue when it happens. Anyone who claims to be a prophet, they're not on God's calendar. I question their prophetic ability. Now you say that God created the calendar before he created mankind. I love that you reminded me of that. that. That tells us how important the calendar is to mankind. God wants to communicate with us. Uh, just like you build the nursery before you bring the baby home. Okay, well, God created the calendar on the fourth day and created man on the sixth day because he wants to communicate with us. But man says, no, we're going to create our own calendar. We're only going to use the moon. I mean, how, what would you say if I told you, okay, let's start celebrating your anniversary or birthday on the Islamic calendar? What would you think? I'm crazy. Well, it's the same thing. Why are we selling, celebrating biblical holidays on a pagan solar calendar? Think how that would make God feel. I mean, it's crazy. You don't tell your boss when you're going to go to work. He tells you when you're going to go to work. You know, you discussed, uh, you discussed one of the reasons that we have these uh, misguided protests at the universities that I think is one of the biggest stains on America in our entire history. You know, when the German citizens, uh, per Eisenhower's orders uh, had to go to the concentration camps to see what Nazism did. They were appalled, they were aghast, they were in shock, and they were greatly ashamed. But when they took the videos to the Palestinian civilians, they were somewhat in glee, quite a different uh, reaction. And you talked about the, the students or, you know, these young people. I don't know if they're foreign students, if they're foreigners, if they're brainwashed from being older here or whatever. But you said certainly a lot of them are brainwashed and that uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Dr. William Saxton. I was part of his group, the Security Council of America. And basically he chose one niche instead of a whole bunch of things. He chose one niche and that was to show that the publishers have sold out our civilization and our publishers have poisoned the minds of all the school kids, including all the way up through grad, all the way up through grad school. So uh, go ahead. You've got it, Pastor. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you, you're amazing. I tell you what, here's the thing. So Donald Trump's plan is to give another massive tax cut to billionaires and big corporations. Because he was a reality star on The Apprentice, there's some folks who think, well, I don't know, he's a businessman. He must know something about the economy. I, I, I've heard people say this, right? I'll talk to them. Why, why would you think about voting for this guy? Well, they're all, well, I remember the economy when he first came in. It was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it was good because it was my economy.
folks, you're looking at the mastermind. And he's it, it's listed like that in the code that, that we're going to look at. Right? This guy never really left office. I, I, I had spent, I, I, I had spent, I had spent eight years cleaning up the mess that the Republicans had left me. And then I handed over 75 straight months of job growth to Donald Trump. And all he did was give tax cuts to folks who didn't need it, drove up the deficit in the process, and now he wants to do it again. You can't give him credit for that. And then I, th th then I hear, the, the other thing I hear. Folks, do you believe that? <laughs> you believe any word of that? This guy is something else. Ay, ay, ay. But let's just stop that. And uh, take a look at this code that we looked at the other day. <clears throat> if you guys remember, this was election 2024. And uh, let me close that out because that's live. And I don't want it to interfere. There's something going on with the internet today with the solar flare. So the internet's a little bit unstable where I am right now. Here we go. I got a few more things in here um, that we didn't talk about the other day. Uh, and I kind of rushed through it, especially, you know, talking about three codes. Um, at some point, I just started feeling uncomfortable talking about it. And so I kind of rushed through it. And we didn't get into a lot of the scriptures uh, in here or in the other ones, right? So let's just review. Um Election 2024 is the access term. Uh, the United States is here. Bet Aleph Resh Hey Bet in, in the blue is the United States. And then we have Kamala's name here twice. Same skip. One in, I mean, the same skip pattern. One going in one direction and one going in the other um, in opposite directions. So that, that's kind of weird. So here's the first one. The, the, uh, mem of Lamed. Hey, and then from from here, going up and stopping at this hey here. Look at this. Uh, the same letters. Kuk, mem, Aleph, Lamed. Hey, you see that hey is, is, is white here because it belongs to another word, which is corruption. Um, that's right here in the white. You also got the only place, Hanasi, which is the president, and this whole table, all, you know, the whole thing, the only place that word appears is right there. And it's right where the first letter of her name is. And then we see her name is closely associated with war. And, uh, you know, the corruption leads to war. Three wars here. We've got abortion. That's her topic right now, right there. And uh, it's right here as well. And then we got uh, Biden's name in the blue. The bet yo yo dollar noon. Obama's name, Aleph Bob Bet Mem Hay. And Obama's name is also here. This is why I say what I just said. See how his name is sandwiched really close to this anomaly right here, right? You guys remember what I told you with this meant? Uh, noon bet, noon, excuse me, noon gimbal, noon bet. Let's go to a translator because I don't want to say it out loud. Noon bet, noon gimbal. Excuse me, I think it's noon gimbal, noon bet. Yes, noon gimbal, noon bet. Sorry about that. Noon gimbal, noon bet. 
So Obama's name is right there next to that anomaly right there, right? Back to it. Noon bet, noon gimel. Obama's name. And then you have the word for uh, difficult. Um, that that's encoded right there, so it's in line and an extension to that. And then, uh, you know, in the plain text, we have um, in a day of distress, right there. Let's let's go read what that says. Sitting right on it, sitting right on it, All right? That is Psalms 77, Psalm of David. Listen to what he says. And I cried to Elohim with my voice, even unto Elohim with my voice, and he gave ear to me. In the day of my trouble, I saw it, uh, Yah, and sore ran in the night, and ceased not, my soul refused to be comforted. And I remembered Elohim and was troubled. And I complained, and my spirit was overwhelmed. And thou holdest mine anger, excuse me, excuse, excuse me, thou holdest mine eyes waking. I'm also, I am so troubled that I cannot speak. And I have considered the days of old and the years of ancient times. And I call to remembrance that my song in the night. I will commune with mine own heart and my spirit made diligent search. Will Yah cast off forever? Will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Doth his promises fail evermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in his anger shut up his tender mercies? All right, listen to what he's asking here and where that sitting in a day of distress was stolen, Obama, United States, right? And people who are um, in distress and their spirit is tormented and, you know, they're, they're praying, will y'all cast us off forever? Will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Right. But then, you know, there, there's, it's interesting where this is, where this is encoded, because it's, we're at the tail end. Let's just, uh, you start from where abortion is, right? This here is Ezekiel, Ezekiel here. And then we go into Hosea, right about here. This is Hosea. The fifth chapter and then Hosea and then Joel right here. Joel running right through where, where war is. And then right under that, we've got Amos and then Amos again. And then Jonah and then Micah, Nahum, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Zechariah, Zechariah. Malachi, Psalms, Psalms begins right here, right there. And you see where Psalms runs through, all, you know, all the way down to uh, the end. So we're going to cover some of these scriptures here in just a moment. All right, so I want to I want to start uh, reading some of these scriptures starting up here in Hosea. But I also want to point out that we also have um, the word computer. Um, I actually turned the video off and because I had a thought about computers and uh, this election it does appear vertical in, in this table. It's also here and here there as well. All right, so we're going to start right here in Hosea. I was talking about earlier, and that is chapter 5. In verse 13, um, running right through here. And when Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw, Judah saw his wound and when Ephraim, uh, and when, and went Ephraim to the Assyrian and sent the king Jerob, yet could not heal you, nor cure you of your wound. 
for I will go for I will be unto Ephraim as a lion and as a young lion in the house of Judah. I even I will tear and go away and I will take away and none shall rescue him. And I will go and return to my place until they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. And in their affliction will they seek me early. And now, you know, the reason why I think this is relevant <clears throat> and all these, all these verses, I think chapter and verses going through here are relevant. Speaking about Ephraim. Now Ephraim is prophesied in um, Genesis 48 from Jacob that it, Ephraim would be Mila Hogin, which is the, the fullness of the Gentiles or the fullness of nations. And that's exactly what the United States is um, by definition, a fullness of different nations, all kinds of different people groups, right? And so that's what Ephraim is, all right? So you can see this uh, parallel between Ephraim and the United States there. So um, you are speaking to Ephraim there. All right, Hosea, the next one. Let's go down to the next one. That is in the, you know, 11th chapter, verse 11. And they, that, and they shall trim it as a bird out of Egypt and as a dove out of the land of Assyria. And I will place them in their houses, saith Yah, Ephraim compassed about. Uh, with lies and the house of Israel with deceit, but Judah yet ruleth with Elohim and is, is faithful with the saints. Ephraim feedeth on the wind and followed after the east wind. He daily increased lies and desolation. And they do not, and they do make a covenant with the Assyrians, and the oil is carried into Egypt. And Yah also had the controversy with Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways and according to all his doings. He would recompense this. This is the, the two nations, Israel and the United States, when it's talking about Ephraim here. Remember? Milah Goim, the fullness of the Gentiles. Right? That is literally what the United States is. Fullness of nations. And he took his brother by the heel in the womb and by the, his strength he had power with Elohim. Yeah, that's talking about um, Jacob there. All right, and then right here is Joel. You can see wars encoded here. You can see it in the text there. Chapter, second chapter. Let's start with verse 22. Let's see what's going on there. All right, so um, toward the end of chapter two, we're, you know, we're at the, at the last six verses there, 22 to 27. Look what comes after that. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions, but also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days I will, will I pour out my spirit. We haven't seen that happen yet. That's coming, right? I will show wonders in heavens and in earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of Yah comes, right? So there's signs that we're going to see physical signs. And in all this in succession, we'll know exactly what's going on, right? And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon, look at this, what? Call upon Yah shall be delivered right so one after the other again starting with hosea going down to joel the very next one is amos uh that's also amos jonah there you know the story of jonah that's uh jonah there micah here and i think this is micah right here where abortion is enc encoded i'm not sure if we looked at this in the last video. Micah chapter 4 verse 8 is where we start there. Woman in travail. For the 
pangs shall take thee as a woman in travail, and be in labor, in the labor of a, to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail, for now shall go forth out of the city, and shall dwell in the field, and, right? And shall even go into Babylon. So this is talking about the captivity. When a woman is um, in travail, even in the middle of having a baby, right? But also what we see taking place. Remember what I, I told you, you guys, the biblical concept of the threshing floor. Look what's taking, uh, what's taking. But they know not the, uh, they know not the thoughts of Yah, neither understand uh, they his counsel, for he shall gather them as sheaves unto the floor. That's the threshing floor. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make uh, thine horn iron, and I will make their hoofs brass, and thou shalt beat the pieces of many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto Yah and their substance. So the threshing is coming, right? So there, the, the concept of that running, running right through there. Why? Because of the abortions, which is encoded there. Um, let's, let's drop down here, which is uh, Zephaniah right here where we have the the anomaly of yom yahuwah the day of in, in english it's day of, of yahuwah but in hebrew it's yom yahuwah zephaniah one again you we, we see you know judgment Again, yeah, as you can see there, pause the video, read it for yourself. All right. Then I got two highlighted here. This one is uh, Zachariah, where we have war. Chapter 14. This is, this is, literally, okay, so he pours out his spirit upon all flesh, and then right here we see what? It's basically the day of Yah. This is this is when Yah comes down and splits the mountain. It's also we see what Gog make Gog Armageddon. Behold, the day of Yah cometh, and they and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken, and the house rifled, and the woman's ravished. Right, so we see so we, we see the spark of that right now. Well, what's going on with Iran in Israel? <clears throat> but he's going to draw all nations into this battle. But look what happens. Then Yah shall go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in a day of battle, and his feet shall stand it on that day, or in that day, on the Mount of Olives which is before Jerusalem, and on the east of the mountain of Oz, he shall cleave it in the middle of uh, thereof toward the east and toward the west. So his feet are going to touch the ground on the mountain and split it in two. Look at that. And then there is an earthquake that takes place. And I believe this is when 7,000 are killed in that, or somewhere is prophesied where 7,000 are killed. <clears throat> right? So, also in here, I didn't mention this earlier, but we've got uh, Yerach Dom, which is the blood moons. Mark Biltz was talking about that. It's it's encoded there. So, um, but but this this part right here, where we've got Obama's name, and you know, what we can't mention is there. And the fact is, this is the, the election 2024. Computers are here. Main topic, the abortions. The fact that the president falls on the, her name. Um, you, know, you, you can see where I'm going with this, right? So, so that's what I got for you right here. You guys, if I come up with any more, <clears throat> I'll bring that to you. Um, you know, I think you can bear a bad news, but. That's what it looks like. And if it looks like something different, uh, I, I would certainly tell you guys, right? 
let me just show you something. If you didn't know already, if you go to YouTube and to my channel, because some of you message and ask how you can help me out, it, the link is right here to do that. You guys, if you want to help me out, this is my PayPal link. But also, you, you guys, anytime we do a live, those videos are going to be found right here if you didn't know. Right, right under the live. But also, when you, and I, I can't do it because this is my channel, but when you see the, the, subscribe button hit the all button for subscribe and you'll get all the videos right if you could please help us with a donation um, i'm currently traveling got legal business in hawaii and i have to be here and it's expensive so um, please think about me be praying for me in this time and uh, shalom i'll see you guys in the next video